thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I will, it, my mind will be a very brief one. I will be focusing on uh, what TPLS has been doing for the past three years in flashback. So as you are very, very well aware of, uh, the federal government is undertaking uh, a rule of operation in Tigray uh, with a view to make Tigray an integral part of the country wherein there is a functioning rule of law. Um, if you allow me to take you back to three years in flashback, uh, nearly three years ago, the people of Ethiopia uh, spoke loud and clear, clear that they had, have, they had enough of TPLF. Uh, so, so TPLF led tyranny, not only TPLF, the whole tyrannical system. And some of us listened, inclu including the prime minister, which resigned, uh, who resigned at that time. But the, TP the TPLF could not hear of it. Uh, they were, TPLF was so used to privilege that when it was asked to uh, share power equally, it felt, as if, it felt as if they were oppressed. Uh, so what GPLF chose is uh, to extend its, its, uh, grip, on, its grip on power, on power through many means, which included the non-stopping non uh, proclamation of decrees, I mean, a state of emergencies, and the attempt to crack down on the uh, social movement, which didn't work. Uh, so, the, then the next step that TPLF did to stop the ongoing social movement was uh, to introduce uh, what was allegedly called the Deep Renewal Movement, uh, a, a, a renewal movement within the PRDF, uh, to sabotage the call for radical reforms uh, by, uh, by introducing cosmetic changes, superficial changes, which we were not going to uh, uh, answer uh, the serious conscience that were raised by the public. Uh, so, uh, you know, part of the leadership within the PRDF was closely watching this constellation of events. Uh, so a group of leadership within PRDF that believed that fathomed the need for change and its inevitability arose. Uh, so, EPRDF ceased to be one unified block. And then there is a dichotomy of EPRDF, those that, are, uh, that understood the need for change and that wanted to work for it, those that want to block the call for change and maintain its grip and power. So, TPLF belongs to the, to the second category. It wanted to uh, maintain the status quo. Uh, so, amidst uh, of all this, then the Prime Minister resigned. So uh, there, are, there arose the need for uh, the election of a new Prime Minister, new Chairman of the APRDF. Uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed uh, representing the, the, the group of leadership that wanted change came to the scene. TPLF felt threatened and it wanted to block uh, his election as a Chairman of the APRDF and then con concomitantly as a Prime Minister of uh, Ethiopia. Uh, but uh, this became an utter failure. He, he won the hearts and minds of the, the most of the APRDF uh, leadership, so he came. Uh, he was able to assume both the chairmanship and the premiership, the chairmanship of the APRDF and the premiership of the nation. Uh, so the, the when, after assuming power, the Prime Minister uh, began to take a series of reforms and changes that included the unseating of the heads of the army and national intelligence. Uh, uh, so the, in reaction to this, the TPLF chose to run away and caved in Mekali. Uh, instead of accepting this fact, instead of the, uh, the measures taken by way of reform, TPLF wanted to resist it and to, to go back to Mekali. So uh, he, he hid in Mekali, TPLF followed the three-tire approach to obstruct the popular uh, change and reform introduced by 
the Abis administration, as you are very well aware of, the Abis administration introduced both change and continuity. There were things that need to be continued, the good things, and there were things that need to be changed. So it's uh, a policy of both change and continuity. Uh, so it's, it's uh, we can call it reform, it's not a revolution, it's a reform. Uh, so then the first uh, tire uh, strategy designed by TPLF to obstruct the change was to make Tigran an island of resistance to change. Uh, uh, by way of doing that, TPLF becomes, I mean, Tigray becomes uh, uh, la, la, uh, uh, TPLF gets a reducible minimum, a place where it can plan its, its uh, act of obstructing the change. So Tigray was meant to serve TPLF as a safe haven to extend its plan of obstructing the change. So the first, in doing, by doing so, uh, TPLF misled the, the, the Tigrayan elites, the Tigrayan people, that the change is against its own vested interest. While the truth is the change may have been against the interest of finger counter TPLF top-ranking officials. It was, not the, it was not against the Tigrayan people, it was not even against the interest of many of the uh, rank and file of the TPLF. Uh, so, the, the second tire approach it designed to resist the change was to accumulate a massive soft power. TPLF come to uh, possess more than 12 TV channels. It, uh, it tried to uh, build an immense social media, social media mobilization capacity uh, at a very high uh, cost. Uh, by doing so, TPLF will accumulate a soft power that may be able to obstruct the chain. And the third tire TPLF introduced was uh, uh, building hard power. TPLF uh, began to recruit special Liu police, special police. Uh, it also began to give training to its uh, uh, rank and file militias. It, it kind of tried try to instill uh, 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 an army capacity uh, which is tantamount to that of the national army. Uh, so by making Tigray an island of resistance and then building a, a massive amount of soft power and then all the way to uh, building uh, 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 an, uh, 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 an army infrastructure uh, which was almost in par with the national army. TPLF wanted to come back to power to Addis, if possible, and if that, if that is not the case, to uh, kind of make Tigray a de facto state, uh, by uh, joining the, the likes of uh, Somali land. Uh, so, and amidst, amidst, amidst this, amidst this, this constellation of events, TPLF uh, understanding that the street strategy didn't fruit, didn't bear the, uh, the kind of fruit it wanted. Uh, TPLF undertook its own election, which is against the letter and the spirit of the constitution. Uh, so, by then, EPRDF, for everyone to see, was uh, dichotomized into two groups, those that spouted the change those that are against the change, mainly represented by the TPLF. So amidst all this, the rest of us, like the rest of us that wanted change, asked for apology, and the people gave us the chance to put our record straight. The TPLF strategy, will, TPLF adopted a different strategy as I've uh, uh, talked about it. So in introducing the change, uh, we found out that there was some gross violation of human rights perpetrated by senior government officials that needed a serious redressing. Part of this, part of this was the case of Abdi Ile. Abdi Ile uh, was found to have uh, uh, perpetrated a number of crimes, so his case was is ta taken to a court of law. It's being, still being presided. And equally true, some senior ranking TPLF uh, uh, officials were suspe suspected of having violated the law of Solan. 
so we asked them to appear before the court of law. They refused, and since then Tigray became an island of resistance to change, and the federal governments attempted to uphold, uh, to uphold rule of law. Generally speaking, TPLF response to the wave of reform changes we introduced can be categorized into two broad uh, categories based on period of time. The first, which elongates itself from the appointment of the prime minister, all the way to the formation of the Zagna party, uh, wherein TPLF assumed the role of insider-outsider. Uh, the second category can also be said, it extends, uh, it's far-fetched itself from the appointment of the prime minister until now. Uh, TPL, in this case, TPLF become an absolute outsider. Uh, so here you see the escalation. TPLF uh, chose not to be part of the Zagna party, so things escalated. TPLF sabotaging acts got exacerbated. Uh, uh, in, in all this, the, the federal government showed extreme patience and continued to engage them. We sent elders as go-betweens to smooth things out and bring, bring them to, back to the fold. The region got annual budgets that it never got in its history, even when they were running the show with no accountability. So our commitment to, to the people of Tigray never wavered. An act that was perpetrated in, so all, among us, all of this, there comes a black Tuesday, the Black Tuesday. Uh, this Black Tuesday took things to the climax. Uh, it was obvious for everyone to see that we had problems with the TPLF. TPLF was engaged in a uh, number of sabotages with a view to obstruct the change. But there was a limit to it. The, the Black Tuesday is different from all those things that have come and gone for the past three years because it crossed the red line. TPLF raided our uh, Northern military command base. It killed our soldiers. It took control of our hard-won artilleries. No, no government would ever tolerate this. There is a limit. No, no one, no government would be patient about this. So we were forced. Then this became the final straw that broke the patience of the federal government. I would say the federal government is in this constellation, we are taking a rule of law operation. Uh, the federal government is advancing on different fronts. The military vision against TPLF is extremely popular in this country. The operation by the federal government is legal as per the letter and the spirit of the Constitution. Thank you very much.